script that you did, and then I've got your CSV, but you can give people instruction as to how you think them, uh, you want them to follow you. Um, the other thing I guess I'll point out is like for the R group, I, um, I mentioned over there that I've become annoyed, just, just annoyed enough to act on it. I've become slightly annoyed with uh, the way that Teams has permissions attached to these videos. People make the videos because it's useful to themselves and other people, but then it gets automatically shunted to the Harper closed. Um, I can't remember what it, there's a you kind of a euphemistic name for the web space. It's like a streaming.microsoft.com, but it's you have to log in through Harper to get it. And a few people have said that like PhD students, when they move from their student account to a uh, staff account in their second year that they haven't had access to some of them. So what I've been doing <clears throat> is I've been downloading the recordings that people make, just like the one that just started and uploading them to YouTube. And I've put links for the past ones. I've got a placeholder for the one for today. So I'll, I'll do it. I'll keep that up as long as I can. So for the past meetings, the first meetings, um, they're, I haven't edited them, so they're horrible. There's no editing, but um, but you know, some people have said that they're useful, so I'll I'll keep doing it as long as people find it useful. So that's it, um, George. I'll just hand it over to you. You can introduce the topic and take it from there. I'm gonna unshare my screen, and you can do do it how you wish. Thank you, Ed. So today, I thought we could go over organizing data sets, because I'm sure many of you know, most time is actually spent organizing your data compared to actually analyzing your data. So I have prepared a Python script in Colab and an R script, because for some reason I couldn't use the R function that Joe Roberts used when he was creating his graphs. Now, I don't know if this is because I'm actually trying to alter the pandas data frame compared to Joe, who was visualizing the data frame, but in two different methods. Um, so I've basically done one in R and done one on Python. So the whole point of when you have tidy data, um, tidy data is like the term for it introduced by Hadley Wiggum. Um, and he's done a lot of work on it. And it basically means that each variable has to be in a column and each observation in a row. And then another one, which I wasn't actually that aware of, is that each type of observational unit forms a table. Um, now, I guess you can decide, you might not want to do that depending on what you're trying to analyze, um, but it was a good to have it in this example just because it shows you how to split your data sets in Python. So I have got some examples of tidy data and untidy data, um, well, just the one. So you can see here for this untidy data version, you've got two words for your species. Alligator doesn't really, isn't really the, the correct term. So they've split it further down here into their genus, um, instead of having it genus and species in just the species column. Obviously that should be two separate columns because it classes as two separate variables. Then they've got the habitat and their weight. Um, and something that I noticed here as well with the weight is you've got it in pounds and kilograms. So for, anal for analysis, that's going to be quite tricky. Um, so you need to convert it into one kind of um, one kind of measurement. Then exactly the same for lengths. And then latitude and longitude, they got these in one column, whereas again, like the genus and the species, that's two separate columns, ideally. The date format was a, a little bit of a not very clear at all. Um, and then the tidy data form, they'd split it into one which tells you kind of like the weights and the lengths for that species. Then the second one, which is telling you the habitat and the location. And then the third observational unit was the species, like full name. So class, genus and species. So, yeah, you can see how analysing this format of data, data will be a lot easier than analysing this format of data. But obviously there's a lot of steps in getting this data here like this data here. So that's hopefully what we're going to address um, in this session. Now, I haven't been coding in Python very long at all. Um, probably, yeah, not, not very long. Um, so I just thought I'd give it a go. And hopefully some of you guys would like to just give a few items a go because it's 
the easiest way to learn. Um, so starting here, I have got the data set. I'll actually just show you the data. Um, as a CSV file. So this is the raw data, which we're gonna read in. So you've got the ID, um, you've got the name of the student. Um, this data is all about student performance. You've got the phone, you've got the age and the sex of the student, the test number, the term, um, and then these are obviously the marks. So now we'll look at how to turn this into a tidy data format. Um, so I shall run this one. So here I'm just installing pandas. So it's saying requirement already satisfied. And I think we went over this in, in previous weeks. And that's basically just because Google Colab has got everything in already. Um, but if you were to use general Python outside of in a different working environment, you often do need to make sure you do it install them and import them. So here, um, this was the extension which I was trying to use so we could compare directly between Python and R, um, but this wouldn't work for me. So I basically have just done an R script as well. Um, hey George. Yeah. You can tell the syntax for that as the percent percent big R. And it'll and it'll run um, it'll run R. I, uh, I, so I, I haven't even tried it myself since Joe did it last week, but um, just the syntax to call. The uh, art. Yeah, I, I think I know what you mean. So like here, down here, yeah. I would in a new I'd use that in a new window, wouldn't I? In a new window, we could test it real quick if you make a new. Yeah, yeah, a new cell. I'll do it here because I'm pretty sure I did try that, but it, it didn't work. It was percent percent big R. Yeah. Um, and then, and then uh, yeah, so was, do, do something like mean open bracket C open bracket three four five. There you go. I See think this. I think this will work though. Oh, ah, one sec. I need to run this one. I didn't run this one though. I think so. I think that's why that hasn't worked. I think this will work, but I think the reason mine wouldn't work e earlier is because I was trying to alter the uh -huh. pandas data frame. So like now, if I try and do that, but I try and fiddle around with this data frame. So if I load in my student performance data frame, firstly, I've just got to make sure I've got my data. So I'll just quick, I'll quickly do that. So here we're basically just authorizing Google Colab to access our own Google Drive. So my data is already in the Google Drive. So if any of you would like to follow along, if you just download the data set from the website that Ed's made and upload it into your Google Drive, you'll then have access to this um, data. If you have an, if you want, alternatively, I put a link in the chat for um, the link to the to the data file on GitHub, and you could replace that link with the uh, link in the double quote in George's cell that calls the script. That'll also work. Sorry, I've never done it take this long before to do. There we are, we're all mounted. Okay, so now I'll load the data. Now what I wanna do with this data set is I want to split it into two. So I've got two tables um, which represents two observational units. So one being the student information and one being the performance information. So I'll first do it in R here. And this is why I think it won't work for me. So percent percent R. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to split my student performance data frame into student and performance information. So if I just do student underscore uh, student underscore data frame, then I'm going to assign it to the data frame, which is student performance data frame. And I just want um, 
columns and I define to do comma. You need square brackets there. Comma. Now the columns form as one to four. I want columns one, two, three, four, which is my ID column, my name column, my phone column, and my sex and age column. Now it wouldn't work. Now I think this just, is because just remove remove that that initial open round bracket right by DF. There you go. Try that. Yeah, I think it doesn't work because you you're actually trying to mess with the original data frame. Yeah. Um, so that's why I just kind of reverted to doing an R script separately. But hold on, can you scroll up just a little bit and let me see? I don't want to sidetrack your your script because this is something you hadn't planned. But um, can you scroll up just a little bit? A little bit more than this. Yeah, a little bit more. Where you read in the data frame. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a thing that Joe. Mahango asked Joe Roberts, and I I wasn't I was a little ambiguous on it on how Python and R talk to each other with respect to data frames. I wasn't satisfied after that, but uh, any anyhow, carry on. I don't want to get sidetracked on that. Yeah, I I think because Joe was trying to Joe was visualizing the data, whereas here I'm trying to like break it up. Do, do you know what I mean? So maybe that's got something to do with it. Um, yeah. Right, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna hash this out now. Um, so you can see that this is our data frame. So the first level of improvement that we want to make is we want to make sure we've got different observational units in different data frames. So we want to create two different data tables. So that's what's going on here. So splitting the data frame in Python, we've got the name of the data frame. Then instead of what we'd use in R, where we've got the kind of the crocodile and then the dash, we've just got equals. Then we've got the name of the data frame that we want to that that we're kind of splitting. Then we've got the name of the variables that we want to have in that new data frame called student underscore data frame. And then we'd want to do the same for the performance data frame. Now we want ID, test number, term one, term two, term three. Now I thought this was kind of good as well because when you're looking at the performance of students, you often don't want to. Um, you need to make sure that you're not given the name of the student. Um, so therefore, with separating the data frame works quite well and is a good reasoning with regards to student data. Um, now we can see here we've got our student data frame. Oh, I didn't actually win it. Student data frame is all there and our performance data frame is all there. Now I'm going to go over to our R script now and show you the R code for that part. So I'm setting up my working directory over here now. Um, and then here I'm splitting it. So improvement number one, same as improvement number one in the Python script. We've got the student data frame. This instead of the equals, um, um, square brackets. Then because we are selecting the columns and not the rows, we've got co uh, comma, then the names of the columns that we want to select. Then here in these two kind of comments, I've just done the other two alternative ways that you can do that in R. So you can do it via numbers, one, two, three, four, um, or you can do it via the one comma um, colon four. And then obviously the same for the performance data frame. So I shall run that. There we go. So now all of those are up here in our environment. So now I'll go back over to the Python script. Um, it, is anybody following this? Do I need to stop at any point? It is fairly basic, easy stuff, but that's where I'm at at the minute. So I'm following along. <laughs> Bro, thank you, Ed. So then we've got improvement two. So this was actually quite good, I thought, um, code-wise. So the problem that we've got with our student data frame is we've got sex and age in one column. Um, now, ideally, this should be two columns because they're two variables. So what we're telling Python to do is we're telling it to get that row, get that column and for each row, split it via this um, dash here, because that is if we go back up to here and we look at it, it's got a dash. So if this was a slash, we'd put a slash. If it was a dot, we'd put a dot. So that's why we've got a dash there. So we split the column by dashes. 
Then we want sex being zero, so that's the first part, and age being um, one, which is the second part. And I think that's just pulling the two, kind of pull it, pulling the first part and the second part as zero and one. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there, uh, Matt, because I know you're excellent in Python. Um, but if anyone else knows if it's different to how I've explained it or can explain it better, then please go ahead. Um, yeah, I think it's made it into like a list, doesn't it? So zero and one will be the index of within the list that it's made. Yeah, bro, well, thank you. And then what we're saying here is we're saying if the sex is male, we're telling if it's if the sex is just M, replace it with male. Then for everything else, which is F, it's going to be female. Um, and then we're going to return that new um, data frame and it's going to be split into sex and age separately. So I shall, I'm going to have to, I'll carry on explaining this part and then I'll run the whole thing. Then we are applying, we're splitting it into two here. So it's, it's turned it into a series and we're splitting it into two here and adding it back into the data frame. And then the next step, because it hasn't replaced the sex, and age column it's added it onto the data frame we then need to drop the sex and age column um, so it's kind of a bit of a cleanup and that's doing it with that dot drop function um, there so i believe that has worked yeah tick um, so now if we take a look at the data frame we can see that now sex is male female male female and the ages are all separate as well so back into r and we shall explain improvement two in R. So here we have got the student data frame one. Now here, instead of in R, I've kind of done it differently. Now this is just the way my mind works, I guess. I have to break things down really simply so I can understand them. Um, but what I've basically done is created a new data frame, which has literally just got the sex and age in um, separated by the dash. So I'll run that. And then if we go into that, uh, data frame we've just got two observations two two variables where it's separated them so now obviously i need to add that data frame back on to to that um here i'm just renaming them so the first one was x1 and the second one was x2 so i'm renaming that as sex and age then i've got the student data frame and i'm assigning it the c bind function which obviously combines the two together so i've combining this one, which was my initial data frame that I split off um, with the one that I've just just made. So put that back together. Then now I want to remove the sex dot age dot column um, like I did in, in the Python with the drop function. Um, now you can see here a different thing between R and Python is you can use Python with the spaces, whereas with R you've got to put the dots in. So sex dot age dot and dot age. Um, so yeah, it does that automatically when I put it in. I, I didn't actually change it to that. It just, that's how it does it. Um, then here, I'm literally just renaming um, the M with male and renaming the F with female within the sex column of the student underscore data frame. So if I enter that, and then we'll have a look back look at the student data frame. Oh, let me rerun it again. Back up here back onto the student data frame. We can see that it's now renamed it, everything. And it's actually given me an extra one here. It's given me an extra age dot one. So we can remove the age dot one variable as well. So I can add that in here. Um, remove. It might've been because you ran it twice. Yeah, it could have been, couldn't it? I'll leave it out then. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Um, now we're back over onto our Python data frame, and now we're looking at improvement three. So now we're looking at our performance data frame. So the problem here is we've got the term one, term two, term three, but these all represent the same variable, which is the mark. So ideally what we need to do is we need to join these all together and just have one column which shows the mark. So here, um, pandas have done this like, um, sorry, in Python, we've done this a little bit different, a little bit like I just did improvement two in R, where we've created a new data frame. So what's happened is term one, term two, and term three have all been melted into their own column using the pd.melt function. Then we've pulled our data frame, which is 
performance underscore data frame. Then we are saying the variables that we want to kind of um, merge together. And then we're explaining what to, because we need to account for the term and the numbers, we need to first do the variable name, which is going to be term. And then the variable, the, the value name, which is going to be the marks. So I shall run that. And then we shall view it. And we can see that it's turned the var, ne var underscore name is our term and the value underscore name is our marks. Um, you know this part here, this ID underscore vars, Ed or Matt or Joe or anyone. Um, am I telling it here to not mess with those ones? I think that's the the key. You would call it the key in melting this, these this these algorithms to take your data from a long to a wide format are um, they have their own jargon and I think that the ID vars are the ones that are the key that you're uh, sh reshaping your data by and you do oh, okay. it there's a melt function in um, I can't remember the name of the function but it's in the the D plier in the tidyverse. Yeah, that that's merge and gather, but that's been updated now. Um, and I have I have used the updated version in the R script because now it's pivot longer and pivot wider. That's right. I think yeah. Yeah, that's yes. right. So is everyone happy with this? Yeah. I take that as a yes. So yep. I'll move over to the R script. So improvement number three. So now we're doing this in um, the R. So you can see here we're using the pivot longer function and that's basically because they called it pivot underscore longer because we're turning our data frame from a really wide data frame of term one, term two, term three into a really long data frame because obviously it's going to be replicated three times in lengthways, I guess. Um, so we've used install package tidyverse. Now I don't really want to faff installing that again. So comment that out. Then library and Performance data frame is the data frame that we want. Pivot longer. We want to pivot or group together these columns three to five. So I'll just show you. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So these here, three to five. Um, and we're going, the names two is going to be the term and the values two is going to be the mark. So this part here is actually very similar to what we were doing in Python. Um, so we'll select that. And again, we've got exactly the same. So we've gone from a really short data frame to a really long data frame. Um, so now we'll go back to improvement four. So basically what we want to do here is just want to tidy up the column column name. So the word term, um, we don't really need that anymore because we've got it at the top, so we know it's the term. Um, so I should do that. And then I shall run that one. Yeah, we're applying that. We're applying that to remove the the term from each row. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's gone. Then to do that in R, we've got performance, um, the data frame name. We're looking at the term variable um, column. Then we're just going to use the G sub function to swap term with nothing because there's nothing in the bracket. Um, and that's going to remove the term function into that there. So now when we look, there we go, we've just got one, two, three, um, exactly the same as what we had in the Python data frame. One, two, three. Now improvement number five. So here we've got multiple variables are stored in one column and that's for the test number. Um, ideally test one and test two, we can add them and have them as two separate columns. Um, so what we're doing is we're telling we're, we're getting the marks for the test. We're looking at the student ID and we want we're using this data set lock function, um, the dot lock function, which is what Joe covered with the pandas earlier on in the week, uh, earlier on this month. And we are selecting the student ID, the term and the test number, and we want one for test one and one for test two which is then given us the observational marks and then it returns the pandas series data frame. So the marks for each term are then 
shown as two separate columns. So here we are, so we've got the test one mark and the test two mark right there. So we'll go back and do our R script. So here, um, what is that? We're still doing one column. Yeah, so here you can see the difference. I've used a pivot longer and now we're doing pivot wider because we're turning that one column into two columns. So we're using the names from the test dot number and the values from marks. So I should run that. And now if we go into our performance, we've got test one and test two. And you can see the, the difference because this was like nearly 200 odd um, rows now. Now it's only 15. Um, improvement six now, which was to drop the marks and the test number columns. So this is interesting, I thought, because this happened in R, but it didn't, this happened in Python, but it didn't happen in R. Um, and basically what we want to do is we just want to drop this, this marks column here. So obviously we don't, we don't really need it anymore. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're dropping the redundant marks and test number columns, um, dropping the du duplicates, because obviously we're going to have multiple ID, IDs in there now. Um, and we're keeping the first one that was initially in the in the data frame and we're keeping the, the same place. And then it just sorts them by ID to make it look a bit tidy, I guess. And then if we take a look at it now. So here is our, the final data frame. Um, so we've got the, the IDs. So student one, ID number one was there for three terms, which is general school year. And in test one, they got this and test two, they got this over each term. Um, now in R, we didn't have to do that. Um, it, it just, I don't quite know really, I guess it just did it on its own. Um, Ed, do you know why, why they're two separate? Um, no, no, I, I was, I couldn't follow the data objects switching back and forth between languages. <laughs> Sorry. But you, just... this is a kind of practical problem you just have to keep track of, I think within each of the methods you've used, um, you know, you've done some things in a logical way and you just have to keep an eye on it and make yeah. sure that the output is what you want. Yeah. But that's the beauty of like looking at your environment and, and clicking and actually seeing your data frame like that, isn't it? I guess as well. Um, so yeah, I didn't obviously, I did, I did an improvement six for the Python, but we didn't need an improvement six in the R script. Um, and then I just thought, just for the sake of the showing people how to add a new variable in Python, I just thought I'd add the school. Now, this is my primary school, so yeah, ages and ages ago. Um, and we literally just grabbing the data frame, we're adding the name of the column, and then we're adding what we want to be in the row, which is the word Glyn. Um, and now if we actually viewed that, so molten underscore performance data frame, we can now see we've added this um, additional variable, which is the school, which obviously has no relevance really to this data set. Um, it would only be relevant if we were kind of comparing between schools, um, but at least it shows you how. And then in improvement seven, to do the same here, I'm creating a new object, which is called school, and I'm making it Glyn. And then I'm then getting my performance underscore data frame, and I'm adding the school object to my data frame. So I'll quickly run that. And then if I have a look, there we are. There's that fifth variable. So yeah, that's everything um, that I've got to go through. I hope you found it a, a little bit useful. Um, so yeah, thank you. If you've got any questions, then just ask. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. That was great. So are there any questions, any comments? <laughs> I think a thing that I would um, say about tidy data and square data is that um, the standard in statistical consulting is uh, to, when you're starting a new project that involves uh, data coming from a client for the for a, an analysis, you you cost 80% of your time as data handling and 20% for the analysis. 
and you do it with every single data. Even people that know about tidy data, it requires quite a lot of data wrangling. Um, the, the data ring, I do it almost every day. Uh, I don't even think about it anymore, but the um, thing I do think about is I, I almost never get data in a nice tidy um, format. And I data I was working on today, I've already worked on three data sets today. <laughs> the one that was the least tidy was the uh, Branston tuber and stem data from the last couple of years. <laughs> and I, yeah. I was it's just typical. I was sent a, a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet I was sent had about 10 tabs on it. And uh, the, re the a lot of the data was uh, very redundant. And the, this principle of tidy data, you know, you use it every day if you're going to analyze any data. Yeah, I, I actually think that tidying data is actually really rewarding. Because you can actually see what you've done at the end. I think I'm also getting used to wrangling in Python. It, I have to think about it. It's not, I have to work at it rather than in R where I've done it for a long period of time. I you actually- like, You like tidying everything though, don't you, George? I'm looking at your desk at the moment. <laughs> keep, keep that desk clean, Matt. No, no putting no ramen on my desk. <laughs> no, thank you. I think it's helpful as well for me because I'm, I'm not brilliant in R, but I'm slightly stronger in R than I am in Python for definite. So it's really helpful seeing the two different methodologies for doing them. Um, and you start to notice the differences, which is really good. Yeah, this was good. Very interesting for that reason. It would be interesting to zero in on that uh, R talking to Python and back and forth problem in a later session the movement from a pandas data frame to an r data frame making the two communicate yeah i agree i think that's interesting i think another thing that i'm interested in tr trying out i haven't played with it very much is um when they came out with uh, reticulate which is a um a package that allows python code to run in an in the R Studio R environment. So you can do this running R code in Colab, but you could also do uh, the opposite and run Python in an R environment. You have that same problem of um, translating the data objects. And I never did get on top of that, but um, I think it's a good idea to address it in the future, Joe. Are you volunteering for next week for that? <laughs> <laughs> Next week might be too soon if I'm not sure how it works, but I'll, I'll give it a go. And at some point, I'll just let you know that I'm ready to do it. Yeah. OK, <laughs> do we, we want to um, notice that there weren't there wasn't very many people at this one and there has been about 10 people at all the last ones. Um, do you think we want to just keep doing it on on Fridays? through the next month. And uh, and also, I noticed that we don't have our afternoon Python session scheduled. What are we doing this afternoon, if anything? Oh, I didn't realize it wasn't scheduled. But to be honest, I've got nothing to, I'm just so focused on trying to get my, my masters written up and summarized, really. And um, there's nothing essential that I want to report. But if you've got something to report about that Branston data that's really interesting, then no, I I don't. I'm, I'm analyzing it now, um, in in R. What a, what the plan is is uh, at one of the Monday meetings recently. That guy Michael Lee, I think he took this spreadsheet and just kind of looked at the Branston statisticians' analysis, 